Rebuilding a model steam plant. This is part 22. Making a suitable steel mounting base for the 501 boiler, which will incorporate the gas burner holder. Just to recap what this series is all about, I'm rebuilding an existing steam plant to become something completely different from what it was to start with. The steam plant has a Stuart S50 and a Stuart 10V. In earlier episodes, I've worked on both of these engines to improve them. I haven't made an episode for this series for a while, and I do apologise, it's down to pressure of work. Now it's time to resume work on the plant and finish it. Here is a piece of steel plate 3mm thick, and using a sharpie felt tip pen, I wrote 501 boiler base on it, just so I didn't get confused and use the piece of metal for something else. Now I'm working on it, I can remove the writing using a piece of Scotch-Brite. In this clip, the boiler base and the 501 boiler are in my second workshop, and believe it or not, I don't have a steel rule in this workshop. I must put that right today and bring one down from the other place. I think it's time to put my calibrated eye to the test. I just sat the boiler on the metal plate, had a look at it from different angles, and made the marks in the slots on the boiler feet where they contact the steel plate. After marking the position for the holes with the boiler in situ, I removed it and filled in the detail once again with a felt tip pen. I will find out in the fullness of time whether these holes are in the right place. I will need to make some sort of assembly to hold the burner, but I won't be doing that just yet. In this episode, I'm concentrating on drilling the holes in the base to mount the boiler and then I'll be drilling some more holes in the base to screw it down to the board. This is a small Bix burner. I bought this from a company called Forest Classics. The details are on screen. These burners are available from Forest Classics in different sizes. This one is about an inch wide. And now I'm in my main workshop checking the measurements to make sure they're in the right place. And guess what? They are. My calibrated eye hasn't let me down. What I need to do now, using a centre punch, is make a mark exactly in the middle of the crosses. Like most things, there is a different technique when using a centre punch. You can get optical centre finders that magnify the image, which makes the job more accurate, but I don't need one of those for this job. If you watch this sequence a couple of times, you will see that the first tap with the hammer is very gentle. And if the centre pop is not in the right place, you can move the position of the centre punch by tilting it and hammering it again. By doing this, the centre pop moves to a different place. Over now to the drilling machine, and it's time for a top tip. On my drilling machine, I have this thing called a cross vise. I've had it for many years, and it's horrible, but it does the job. This statement does not apply to either of my ex-wives, and any references to old boilers don't either. In the cross vise I'm currently fitting a piece of mahogany, because I'm about to drill the holes in the metal plate. I need the mahogany block to be perfectly level with the jaws of the cross vise. Quite near to the drilling machine is where I keep my can of cutting lubricant, and with the block of mahogany clamped lightly in the cross vise, I use the body of the aerosol can as a rolling pin to make sure that the mahogany block is perfectly aligned with the vice jaws. A simple and quick job. Now I can drill the holes in the metal plate. And to do this, being very careful to make sure that the drill point is on the mark, I drill the first four holes where the boiler is going to be mounted. You have to be careful when drilling sheet steel because sometimes it's quite hard and it's easy to either blunt or break the twist drill, but I'm not going to do that. I just take the job nice and easy, there's no rush. After drilling the holes, here I'm countersinking them on one side. I've set the depth stop on the drilling machine, so all of the holes will be countersunk to the same depth. Using a depth stop is not essential, but it makes life easier. You don't have to think, you just position the countersink in the hole and put pressure on the lever until it stops cutting. After drilling and countersinking these four holes, I'll leave the mahogany block in position because there are four more holes to drill. Here's the gas burner sat on the metal plate. It's sat on the wrong side of the plate, but that's not important at the moment. 
The countersinks do of course need to be underneath to accept some countersunk bolts, or countersunk machine screws, whatever you call them, and they need to be underneath. Top tip number two in this episode. Now I need to drill four holes, one in each corner of the metal plate. For all the experienced engineers watching this, we shouldn't really be watching this tutorial. But who knows, maybe you'll learn something. I've drilled a hole right in the middle of this mahogany plank. All I have to do is line up the plank with each corner. Not like this, it needs to be perfectly aligned with the steel plate. And through the hole in the mahogany, I'm using a deep hole marker to make a mark on the steel. Followed once again by using the centre punch to make a pop mark in the centre. And as before, the process starts with one light tap to see whether you're in the centre. Here I'm using a steel rule to verify that the hole is equidistant from both sides of the steel plate on every corner. This is a very simple job, but it can go spectacularly wrong if you hit the centre punch in the wrong place. After making four centre pops on the piece of metal, I drilled each of the holes 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. In this clip I'm showing the top of the metal plate, and I've drawn a line exactly down the middle. This gives me the position for the burner. I think I mentioned previously that I can't fit the burner until the boiler is sat on the plate, which will show me just where it needs to be fitted. Here I'm using my favourite engineering method, which is using a felt tip pen to draw around the part. I think this burner should be okay for a 501. Normally, on a 504 boiler, the spirit burner, the original one, had two burners. For the 501 and 500, it just had a single burner tube. So I'm sort of emulating that in a gas form. Once the boiler's mounted to the plate and the burner's fixed to the plate, and I steam the boiler, then I will know if it's going to be adequate or not. Before that though, I do need to make the mounting and paint the parts using heat resistant paint. It won't be long before this part is finished. It's a simple job. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.